Welcome to GameSpot Live. I'm Greg Kasavin, here to take you on a guided tour through Metroid Prime for the GameCube, which is easily still one of the greatest games available for the system. We awarded it our Video Game of the Year award in 2002, and uh, really uh, there wasn't much competition uh, for, for a game of, of such high quality and, and standards as, as Metroid Prime. Actually, though, Metroid Prime was a bit of a surprise uh, in terms of how good it finally turned out to be. Uh, the series uh, started way back in the late 80s for the Nintendo Entertainment System and was always kind of this open-ended uh, action-adventure, side-scrolling, uh, shooter-type series uh, that, that was really, um, y you know, all about, like, uh, dodging enemies by jumping over them and a lot of uh, jumping from platform to platform and collecting items, things like that. So when it, uh, so when it was announced that Metroid Prime uh, was going to be a first-person perspective game, uh, everyone jumped to the conclusion that it would just be kind of a first-person shooter, similar to a game like Doom, um, only, you know, kind of slapped with a Metroid coat of paint and, you know, would uh, lose sight of what the Metroid series was all about, which was kind of uh, exploration and, and uh, you know, finding things and, and things like that, not just going from one level to the next. Well, it turns out the developer uh, Retro Studios, uh, which uh, never worked on a project prior to Metroid Prime, uh, did a fantastic job at bringing the feel of the old Metroid games to Metroid Prime. Uh, it's still all about exploration. It's still all about finding new areas, uh, making use of new special abilities and new powers, uh, finding bigger and better weapons, and, and fighting uh, tough bosses along the way, things like that. Um, Metroid Prime also uh, just has a very, very cohesive look to it. There, there's no loading time whatsoever, so you're traveling seamlessly from one environment to the next and, and um, really just uh, becoming immersed in, in this alien world where the game takes place. In terms of plot, Metroid Prime basically retells the story of the original Metroid game, uh, again, uh, just putting Samus on, on the heels of these uh, of these pirates who are up to their uh, bad business. And uh, here at the very beginning of Metroid Prime, uh, Samus uh, arrives at this derelict ship where apparently these, uh, these pirates are hanging out. So uh, here, she, here she is going to land in her kind of private spacecraft and uh, try to do these aliens in. But of course something's going to happen uh, preventing her from uh, getting away with things quite that easily. Not only does Metroid Prime follow in the same footsteps in terms of gameplay as the previous Metroid games, but it also looks quite a bit like them too, just in certain thematic ways. Uh, Samus herself is unmistakable, and uh, fans of uh, Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo uh, will of course recognize her ship right there. And um, really just a lot of the same mechanics translate. Uh, Samus can roll up into a ball, uh, just like in all the previous Metroid games. She could drop bombs, um, these kind of energy bombs that could blow up enemies or, or even be used to uh, launch, launch her in this morph ball form up to higher ground because she can't jump while in this mode. At any point you could just switch back and uh, really when you're in the morph ball, that's the only time when the game is playing at a uh, from a third-person perspective. While in a first-person view, um, as, as is indicated on screen here, Samus can lock on to objects and, and then her, her movement becomes relative. You just hold down the left trigger and uh, then you, you draw a beat on these things and you know whether they're stationary targets or enemies and, and then uh, you, could, you could have at it pretty easily. And here we're introduced to a new device in uh, Samus's arsenal which is the scan visor. She puts her weapon down and uh, here she could scan objects in her environment and find out what's going on. So she scans this force field and realizes that it blocks the entrance and, uh, you know, the goal is to find the switch. She could scan this object here 
Now the switches are online. And now she can shoot them out. So that's a very early example of what the puzzle solving is like in, in Metroid Prime. It does involve scanning a lot of objects. Uh, Samus can also scan all her enemies and, and it's a very useful ability such as when you're up against a, a tough boss with no obvious weaknesses and you just need to know uh, what it's going to take uh, for you to be able to shoot it. So already there's a lot of bad business going on here. Uh, there's some dead space pirates and, and Samus can go around and scan them. Here we see, uh, you know, the, she's, she's uh, taking these accounts of these various alien creatures. And, and by scanning objects, that's really, how, um, that's really how the story of Metroid Prime unfolds. It's, it's kind of an interesting storytelling mechanism. There are no big, long, like, uh, cut scenes or anything in this game. Uh, there, there, there's no, there are no scenes of Samus, like, standing around and, and chatting with a bunch of characters. Uh, it's, it's just her scanning these objects, reading the Space Pirates' data logs and things like that. Um, and, and, f and figuring out what uh, notorious affairs they happen to be up to. Here's the first instance where we have to roll up into a ball to get to where we need to go. We could step onto this map grid and, and download a map of the area. And there's a brief animation of Samus uh, kind of downloading the data. And then we could check out the 3D map uh, by pressing the Z button at any time. This map is, is pretty intimidating at first. It's, it's kind of this wireframe uh, 3D model of, of the entire area. Um, it, it takes a little while to get used to. Uh, and on the other hand, it, it's actually very, very functional, like each area of the map is, it has its own unique name and label and, uh, and you could kind of jump to, to any area using uh, a combination of the analog sticks. It shows you uh, clearly by color coding uh, what areas you've explored and what areas you haven't explored and uh, really it's just going to be an essential tool throughout the game. Here we see some of the space pirates that have been kind of knocked down. They're, they're already injured so it's not much of a fair fight. Uh, later on, we'll be fighting a lot more of these guys, and uh, they'll be much, much more powerful because uh, they'll be at full strength. The space pirates actually come in a number of varieties. Uh, some of them are even uh, uh, some of them are even cloaked, and uh, will require uh, some special tactics to be defeated. As in previous Metroid games, Samus uh, can fire missiles as well as uh, as well as her regular beam weapon. Uh, she could also charge up a more powerful beam blast and, and uh, you know, deal a lot more damage that way. As, as you noticed, it can also be used to clear rubble out of the way, things like that. So um, not only are Samus's various beam weapons, uh, you know, used for fighting, but they're, they're also used to kind of destroy objects in the environment, let you get to where you need to go. Now we come to uh, a little surprise, the first of many in Metroid Prime. This is just a taste of uh, some of the dangers to come, but uh, Samus is no stranger to, to danger, and, and uh, she'll deal with this particular danger the same as with any other, uh, using, using her blaster primarily, although she'll have to scan this uh, rather awful looking creature to find out uh, how exactly to deal with it. I could try to shoot at it right now, but uh, it doesn't look like that's actually doing anything. So again, a good strategy is to scan first, uh, stay out of its way. We could find out what it's up to. This is the Parasite Queen. Uh, a weak spot has been detected in its mouth, and uh, it seems to have um, these shields orbiting around it. So let's just try to steer clear of those shields. Uh, by locking onto an opponent and... and um, Using the jump button, Samus can execute these quick uh, dodging maneuvers to um, uh, rather easily avoid uh, enemy fire and, and uh, land her own hits. This Parasite Queen here has almost had it.
So now things start going bad, and the reactor core is cri uh, critical, and Samus has to get the heck out. Again, uh, Super Metroid fans are going to fondly remember that this sequence uh, is, is rather reminiscent of uh, the way uh, Super Metroid started off w with kind of a daring escape. So there's a countdown, and sure enough, if the timer runs out, it's going to be game over, so uh, Samus has to hightail it on out of here. Here's where Samus meets up with her old friend Ridley from the very first Metroid game, and from every Metroid game, in fact. Uh, Ridley is, is a bit of a surprise to see here, and he actually uh, escapes, uh, but not before he kind of uh, deals his last uh, bit of injury to, uh, to Samus. And, and we made it out alive, at least, uh, but this base has definitely seen better days. There goes old Ridley, but we'll, uh, we'll probably be seeing him again. In fact, we're going to chase after him to that there planet, which is Talon 4. And that's where the rest of the game takes place. Basically, Samus speeds off after Ridley, and uh, she's going to have to land on this planet and get back her old abilities. Uh, find wherever the heck Ridley has gone and uh, find what, what these space pirates are up to. It's another reference to Super Metroid that uh, Samus kind of lands in this rain-soaked overworld area. Actually, a lot of uh, Metroid Prime does take place in, in these kind of more outdoorsy environments. There, there's about an equal mix of uh, wide open and kind of uh, tight and claustrophobic areas. <coughs> And again, the really great thing about uh, Metroid Prime is that it's, it's this uh, very open-ended feeling game uh, where you, you basically exit your ship at this point and, and you're off. Uh, you're off to explore this world. It's, it's a huge area. It's all interconnected and, and uh, you, could, you could go uh, basically you know, where, wherever, uh, wherever you think you should. As, as you can see, there, there are a lot of doors. Uh, you could get to some of them from the get-go and some of them you can't. Uh, you check out the map, and there isn't a whole lot to see at this point. And, uh, you know, immediately you could see a lot of the really great details in, in Metroid Prime, like how, <clears throat> like how rain is beating up on, uh, on Samus's visor. You could look up in the sky, and rain will kind of plunk down on, on her helmet. There's a good amount of replay value to the game. Finishing it once uh, unlocks a harder difficulty mode where enemies uh, deal much more damage and are more plentiful in some cases. Uh, there are also a lot of hidden items and, and stuff to find uh, beyond what's necessary to actually finish the game. Uh, here we're uh, loading up a saved game where we've unlocked absolutely everything. Uh, we've got uh, all of Samus's abilities here. Uh, we're still in the Talon overworld, but we can pretty much uh, roam freely through this environment and go anywhere we want to go and uh, check out all of uh, Samus's different abilities and, and uh, really make mincemeat of uh, most of the remaining enemies on this planet. <coughs> Here's what the entire map of the game looks like. Each of these areas you can zoom in on and, and you know, is this kind of densely detailed multi-story area. So again, yeah, the, the map is pretty darn scary looking, uh, but, but it's indicative of all that there is to see and to explore in this, uh, in this great big game. We're going to take a look at uh, some of Samus's alternate uh, means of attack and, and defense here. She's got her, uh, regular, uh, her regular power beam that she started off the game with. Uh, she's also got three other standard weapons, each of which has a different attack when you charge it up, and each of which has a super attack when you combine it with uh, Samus's missiles. So she's also got the wave beam, which uh, discharges electrical particles. It's got like a limited homing ability and, and kind of a wider spread uh, than the power beam. 
It's also used to charge up uh, certain outlets that, that are out of power. Since it's electrical in nature, it can be used to supply power uh, and, and solve certain puzzles that way. Here we're going to transition to a different area. Much like in the previous Metroid games, we see Samus uh, kind of riding an elevator and, and looking around uh, as, as she goes to like a radically different area of the map. Now we're in the Chozo Ruins, which is kind of this uh, uh, ancient, uh, long, dis uh, long kind of destroyed civilization uh, that, that actually created Samus's suit. She's also got the Ice Beam. You could see uh, her, her weapon kind of frost over uh, when she equips it. The Ice Beam, much like you'd expect, has the nice effect of uh, freezing her foes. Finally, we've got the plasma beam, which shoots these, like, scorching beams of energy. And it's probably the most powerful beam weapon. This weapon just incinerates foes outright. Samus also has different visors besides the scan visor and the, and the combat visor, which is her default view. She's got the thermal visor. And uh, the thermal visor is mostly self-explanatory. Here she could kind of really clearly see... Uh, her enemies in, in the darkness. She can't easily see uh, her environment anymore, but she can uh, pick out uh, enemies, especially ones that might be concealed in darkness or invisible altogether. So that's, uh, that helps, and, and, it, and it's also useful for identifying uh, you know, certain uh, sources of energy that she might need and hidden objects and things like that. Samus also has the X-ray visor which uh, makes everything look like an x-ray. You could even see her, uh, her hand in, in, in her beam weapon there. Um, this uh, isn't immediately obvious what it does, but, it, but again, certain enemies will be concealed even to your thermal vision, and certain platforms uh, will be hidden from sight, and you'll only be able to see them if you uh, switch to your x-ray visor. There are some pretty tough bosses in Metroid Prime. Uh, th they're much more difficult than that first Parasite Queen boss. Uh, they might take you a few tries, and really the key is to, to scan the enemies and, and to find out what their weaknesses are and then uh, try to exploit those weak weaknesses with whatever uh, powers you have available. It's, it's uh, often very helpful to use your charged up super attack and, and uh, use your missiles, things like that. Uh, however you can deal the most damage, that, that's your uh, that's really what you have to do and, uh, you know, repeat until, uh, until uh, you've succeeded. In Samus's inventory, we can check on the status of uh, all her different weapons and kind of read about their functions and things like that, read about the different visors. Um, she's also got a logbook. Uh, she's got data on all the different kind of pirate logs that she's discovered, data on all the creatures uh, that she's seen and little uh, x-ray pictures of them, so knowing what you're up against is, is very important in this game. So really, uh, Metroid Prime is, is just a very unique and, and enjoyable and entertaining experience for the GameCube. There, this game isn't available for any other system and, and never will be since it's a Nintendo exclusive. Um, and, uh, you know, really it's, it's one of the finest games that, that is and probably ever will be available uh, for the GameCube because it just uh, comes together so well and, and uh, has such a cohesive look and style to it. Um, it's really just an incredible first effort uh, from these developers and uh, y you know represents some of the finest talent uh, that, that game designers uh, have to date. It's, it, it's just a game that that has uh, really something for just about anyone. It's not, it's not a pure action game. You don't need you know, the reflexes of, of uh, an expert yo-yo player or something to, to be able to finish this game. Uh, you just uh, you know, really need to use your head and, and look around and, and uh, you know, evaluate your, your situation, look through your surroundings. And, and really, since the game is so good looking, um, since there's so much to explore, you'll really enjoy just about uh, every minute of your experience with Metroid Prime. So hopefully we've given you a taste of uh, what there is to see in this game, and, uh, but let's not spoil any more for you. You should really uh, go and check this game out for yourself if you haven't already.